What up players, it's Wallboss Tear up in this mud. Look what I got in the mail today. It is a swag bag. Care package from a fellow gamer and a YouTube person. So, YouTube personality, which you may know, hopefully you, you do. Um, and if not, I'll include his information below. Paul Pham sent me <coughs> this hobby care package and came with this beautiful letter, which I will read to you now. Warboss Tay, I'm sorry it took forever for me to send this. There were some mishaps with the order and shipping took forever, but fear not. The swag pack is here. The lady boss and I, meaning his lady boss, would like to commend you for your awesome videos and your contribution to this wonderful community. So here are some models as an homage. Thanks for everything. Sincerely, Paul. Hi, Caitlin. Um, now you can have more models to paint. Awesome. So, Paul, thank you so much. Swag packs, hobby care packages, always, always, always appreciated. And of course, you know what that means. Now I'm going to have to dedicate this video to you and send people your way if they are not already subscribed to you because you're such a cool guy. So, two, so, two things in this hobby care swag pack. And we're going to take a look at both of them. We'll unbox this one first. And uh, that's why when you look at the title, there's just so much, you know, they're so different. Like, what? Sisters of Battle and Leopold the Black? What is that? What does that mean? Those don't go together, but they do when they're in a swag pack. Here's the first one. Sisters of Battle for 40k. Warhammer 40k. Let's pop these ladies open. Now, this is such a great gift because they're metal models. I remember when they were talking about re-releasing the, the Sisters of Battle. They were talking about um, possibly getting them in plastics and they're getting a, co a codex, a new codex, so maybe they'll get them in plastics. Fortunately, no such luck. You've got three metal ladies and let's take a look at them. They're all armed with bolt guns. They've got the Adepta Sororitas power armor. Beautiful models though. Beautiful sculpts. Uh, you know what? Metal models, I always feel like metal models make, they just feel good. They feel good, they, they're super hard to convert if you want to do any conversions other than green stuffing, but like say if you wanted to switch out a head, you'd have to shave it down with a, with a razor or a saw. But such beautiful, beautiful sculpts and beautiful models. Games Workshop, I know you can do these in plastic. I know it! You have the capability, you've done all these, you know, witch elves, and we, we know you can do female sculpts in plastic. The Supreme Sorceress, you know, we know you can do power armor and we know you can do females. This third one I like because she's got the closed face face uh, mask, the helmet. Really, really fun. So, yeah, beautiful models. Look at the Inquisition icon hair. And uh, eagles and aquilas on the shoulder pads, plus the fleur de lis on this side. Let's see, skull, skull icons on the necklace, just so much detail. Studs on the tabards. Beautiful stuff, and they all come with these power packs. Power packs are a little bit slimmer, more ladylike, one would say, than the Space Marine power packs. And they've got the Fleur de Lis on this one. I thought that's pronounced Fleur de Lis or de Lis. I don't even know if I'm still pronouncing it correctly now. All you Frenchies out there, let me know. There's that one, and the third one, totally. The same. So beautiful models, beautiful sculpts. As soon as I get some primer on them, I'll be able to see some details better. Uh, yeah, but they've all got that, that characteristic Sisters of Battle Bob haircut. And just beautiful. Another Inquisition pendant. Looks like they've all got, yeah, they've all got Inquisition pendants. Battle Sisters, such beautiful, beautiful models. And four brown bases. Oh, and here. The Peace the Resistance. Paul, I cannot believe you bought me this. It's from Forge World and it comes in a big Forge World plastic baggie and it is Leopold the Black. Such a cool model. For those of you don't, who don't know, he was a special character in the Tamur Khan, Tamur Khan um, book. And basically, essentially, he's like a mercenary prince that lives in the Badlands. And he's like a pirate prince. Preys on the weak, 
gets all their money and then uses it to fund his own force and uh, generally is like a, a Robin Hood in the grim dark version so he keeps most of the money for himself says he's using it for good but who who really knows uh, there's some other interesting stuff about his character but uh, I, I don't have the Tomicon book on me this very minute so I can't double check to be sure but look at that imperious expression Forge World resin the best in the land they know how to do skulls they don't fall apart or look all weird like the fine cast ones the detail the expressions are just so spot on beautiful 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 poofy sleeves with the slashes the armor the flow of the cloak such great stuff okay so there's that what other pieces do we have you've got his hand holding what looks to be like a little scepter or something with a, with a skull or a staff on top so that goes like this because he's a border prince that basically means that he's a he's like a noble a nobleman or he, they fancy themselves as such even though they're just basically like highwaymen and robbers and brigands and stuff so, so that's gonna glue right over here oh, beautiful Okay, what else do we have here? Let's save the horse for dessert. He's got his awesome looking sword. Look at the detail on that little crest at the top. Double-sided skull on the pommel there, or the, the hilt or whatever. Um, clasps for, the, for holding it. And a little sheath. Beautiful. On this side, this is the reins, hand holding the reins, a lot of flash, but once you clean that off, it should look okay. That hand is going to go right onto him there. We also have, these look to be like books. No? Books? I don't know, it looks like it. Bag here, pouch full of coins, pouches full of coins, and what is this? Is this a piece of yeah, I, I don't know. It could be a piece of meat. It could be... I don't know. I'll have to take a look at the, the Forge World site. You don't really see many of these models, so there's nothing that I immediately recognize and say like, Oh, I know what this is. It looks like it's just the barding and the cloth hanging down off of the horse. I think I thought it was some meat because I'm, I've been painting some ogres recently and they've got these little nubs on the ends of their, their meat pieces. All right, on to the horse. Oh my gosh, look at this barding. It is a peacock here, a winged skull motif here, the belt hooking over the horse's back has holes in it, the, the, the saddle has holes. The texture of the saddle looks it like it looks like real leather as opposed to the cloth hanging down from the horse there. On the other side, you've got a fish eating a twin-tailed comet. Ah, oh, so good. And here on the front, more death, uh, more skull and death's head, winged skull imagery. Skull right at the front. Very grim, dark, morbid. Here's the horsey's head. It's got a fish motif on the front. So maybe Leipold has like some kind of back. I gotta double check his background because there's a lot of fish motifs. Interesting. Okay. And the last is a treasure box. A jar with coins hanging out of it. Just fantastic. And the horse's tail. The horse's tail is actually the one that looks most like that looks the most like any other horse tail in the Empire range. A little nub there and then the tail coming down out and then hanging. But other than that, everything about this model is so fantastic. So I'm gonna build these all up right now. The late pole, the black model, and the sisters of battle. We we'll just glue them together and we'll show you what they look like at the end of the video. Hey guys, so here we are getting started. The first thing I did was I went away and I washed everything with soap and warm water. Dishwashing soap or Dishwashing soap is really the best. I've used hand soap in the past, and you can really use either, but 
uh, dishwashing soap seems to be the one to get rid of all the mold release agent and don't make the mistake I did and think that it's okay not to wash your resin because actually Fort World and most resin companies or producers they have this mold release agent which gets stuck on the pieces and it's kind of this shiny uh, layer of kind of filmy material or finish that goes on top of the resin and sometimes you see it more often than not but yeah it's just really important to wash your figures so that it gets rid of that it allows the resin to glue easier and it, uh, it's, it's just overall it's gonna make it better and easier for you to paint <clears throat> later on when you're priming and actually putting paint on the figures so as you can see I was cleaning off the figures and at this point I'm trying to do some initial gluing and pressing the pieces down together onto the horse. Such a great sculpt. The figure of Lake Pole the Black actually sits down onto the saddle I saw at the same point where that cloak or or that blanket thing comes down right right behind him. And yes, it's so beautiful. The pieces all mostly have pegs that fit into little peg shaped slots on the, on the model, so that's that's good. There's just so much like the horse has this barding and under the barding there's this material that's like a blanket or or a silk some kind of uh, material soft fabric like right there you see connected to the front leg and they're all over the place and for some reason my guy wasn't sitting on the horse so I decided later to start using some Vallejo plastic putty to help kind of stick the pieces into place while the glue sets Zappa Gap I used mostly to get these pieces in as you can see there. Forge World materials so fantastic. They're they're really really great. They look great. They uh they feel great. They paint up really well. They look just amazing. The detail you get on Forge World miniatures for those of you who are new or don't know or who have only seen the Forge World work on the newer Horus Heresy stuff. Like when this late pulled the mod the black model came out, there were some other figures at the same time that Warhammer Forge, which is like Forge World's fantasy company, came out with. And just unbelievable. So I'm trying to fit in some putty there because this horse has Um his left hand is holding I guess the reins for it and it's it just was not lining up correctly. Alright, and here at this point I decided to do my resin base, or my cork base. So I broke up some pieces of cork, I kind of dry fit them into the base there. And then I decided to super glue them down. Now whenever you're using or working with a model that is kind of big and weighted very strangely, then I like to um, make sure that I can either pin the, the model into the base or do something similar like that just to just to keep it in spot. I thought while I'm working on that I will glue together the sisters so just some super glue in the back for the backpacks and there they go And here we have the last step where I am cleaning up and gluing everything together. Matting some glue here and um, I'm going to be clipping this resin off and adding a brass rod for the horse. So hope you guys liked it and let's wrap it up now. And there we have it, players, Late Pole the Black in all of his awesome glory. So as I said, I decided to snip off the tabs on the on the horseshoes, use a pin vise to drill into the horse hooves, and then I put in this thin little brass rod, just jabbed it up into And then after doing that, I stuck it into the cork and it made a much, much stronger hold than just the resin tabs at the bottom of the horse hooves. So I hope you enjoyed it. Here's a look at Late Pole the Black with all the glue still drying. A beautiful, beautiful model. Can't wait to start painting him. I'll do a tutorial on him just uh, just because 
uh, to say thank you to, uh, as a thank you to Paul. I just realized there's a little, little bit of flash in there I'm gonna have to get. And uh, let's take a look at our battle sisters because the glue should be dried on those. Here's the first one. Here's the second one. Oh, second one. Here, the glue is still drying on their bases, so they're a little bit wobbly. And the third one, actually her backpack just popped off, so she's obviously gonna need to, to uh, dry a little bit longer. Beautiful models though, can't wait to start painting them as well. Wish their uh, codex was a little bit better than uh, people have said it turned out to be. I've read a lot, or I've heard a lot about people who've played it, and uh, it's not the best codex out there. So that's too bad because I love the models. Love them even more if they got a plastic range. But uh, there you have it. So thanks again, Paul, for the awesome swag bag. Merry Christmas, happy holidays to you and your lady boss and thanks everybody else for watching we'll see you in the next video